we are experiencing. Let me give thanks for it. Something we should do a little bit more than usual. And I'm so out of action, it's ridiculous. And I pressed the delete button. And four pages were deleted. So I took that as a signal to go back and do it again. So I did, and probably this is more likely. So be patient with me, as this is my first time back. And I've got a few more notes than usual. Well, we all know the power of the month for November is elimination, renunciation, and release. It's a big one. Now, the disciple of the month is Thaddeus, or Thaddeus, I always get corrected whichever way I say it, who represents the expulsion of negative thinking. <clears throat> the colour is russet or terracotta, as you'll see in the slides. And the location is the lower abdominal region. Or, writing in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary puts a Surrey that one should learn to let go of thoughts, conditions, and substances in their consciousness, body, and affairs. That's when they've served their purpose and we no longer need them. We should lay hold of new ideas and new substances to meet our daily requirements. <clears throat> Therefore, it is very necessary that the eliminative faculty be quickened in us and that the right balance between giving and receiving, laying hold and letting go, is established in us. Thus, the title of my talk is Clearing the Way. We hear of statements such as the way forward, this way, that way, and the big one from John 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You could do a talk on that easy for the whole half hour. Songs are written. I can't help myself with songs, as some of you know. Some of the songs were All the Way, if you remember Frank Sinatra's version and others that did it. And a song that used to be sung at every talent quest from everyone that thought they were a great singer, uh, My Way that was sung at weddings, parties and everything for years. Anyway, this brings us to the discussion, which we'll still be discussing forever. What does it mean, my way or God's way? In the Bible, we read about the followers of Jesus being called people of the way. But 500 years before the time of Jesus in China, we had the philosophers such as Confucius and Lao Tzu, and their teachings, or Lao Tzu's teachings, are written in a book called the Tao Te Ching. Tao meaning way. Well, the way is really the wisdom of the ages, ancient wisdom, which is in some places called New Thought. We know it's not new. It's always been there for those with eyes to see it and ears to hear it. And in Unity, we do a great class every so often on the history of Unity and New Thought. And it's an eye opener to see all the different streams from all over the world coming together, uh, presenting their, new, uh, their vision of ancient wisdom through the eyes of their culture. But underneath it all, it is the same wisdom. In the past, this so-called knowledge was kept from the masses, supposedly, but it is now available to us all. And this has been possible with the media we've got now. Books have been written with catchy titles and spiritual organizations such as Unity and other new thought groups have been the catalyst for books such as The Secret, which is based on these ancient teachings. So now, 
This wisdom is available down at the local bookshop or library, and of course online you can get whatever you like these days. <clears throat> What is becoming known is that creation, and we are part of the spirit and infinite intelligence, but it is humbling to think that we didn't create it. It created us and gave us the power to use it as we will. In the book of Genesis, it says, God created humankind on the seventh day and said, take dominion. Well, we sure have. And we've made choices. We look around the world and see these choices that we made, which is the result of our individual and collective choices. Because it's not only about us anymore, it's about one goes, we all go. That's why I'm seeing a lot of articles now uh, and online saying it's not just about individual uh, unfoldment, we need a collective unfoldment. And in fact, we're getting there. This and how to use this power in line with universal intelligence, we have many winding roads of all these signs, there's a, one of the signs up here at a tourist spot. There's arrows going everywhere, this way, that way, what do I see first, where do I go? And it's up to us to make the decision, for good or not so good. What makes us want to keep moving? Well, it's a soul urge. That soul urge is in us whether we like it or not. Sometimes we don't want to move forward, and we don't. So what is stopping us? Well, we're clinging to stuff that is holding us back. We need to clear the way. I look at some of the thoughts, things and interests which I had over the years and find they're no longer of any great satisfaction to me. Although at the time, I loved and collected many of these things, books, music, because that's what I wanted. And I got a lot of value out of them. Anyway, I had a test last Sunday. Uh, the street was open and everyone put their garage sale items out in front of their house. And it was so tempting. I walked up the street and there was the complete works of Shakespeare. When I was young, that would have been about $50 or more. I couldn't have afforded it. So in the meantime, I bought two copies of that. I thought, will I buy that one? I thought, no, leave it to mold cheap music, which is usually my downfall. I looked through it and put it down again with two Bibles. I thought, no, I have enough Bibles here to sink a battleship. I should do what the Bible says, not buy another one. And I looked at my house and I thought, gee, all these wonderful things I've collected. But I needed to because that was part of me at the time. So I walked straight through the town and I thought, yeah, been there, done that, old oh, kettle. There will be someone that wants that pot plant. There will be someone that wants the Bible. Someone wants some old cheap music like I did. Now, it's not easy to part with things. But I find that as I expanded my consciousness, which I have a long way to go, some of these early books I didn't want to get rid of. And I'm not. So I don't feel as if I'm holding it up, my consciousness up. But... I think I've mentioned this before to you. We go back over our old books and I see what I've underlined. And there's hardly anything. But over the years, I've started to underline more and more. Now, this information was always there. Why didn't I see it? I wasn't ready for it. 
the first book I ever bought. The stuff in it, probably most of the stuff I would need for this lifetime, but I never really consciously realised it. So some books I won't give away, and some of those I noticed was uh, a book of Yogananda. I've got two copies of um, Autobiography of Yogi. I'll give one of them away, but the other one meant so much to me then, and it does now, because of Tim West, bringing Hindu and um, Christianity together, or presenting them in a way that we could understand each other. So, as we grow spiritually in every way, it says here, sometimes we think, well, it ain't necessarily so. What we thought in the past is the truth may not necessarily be that way now. Even those who come to us from other groups into unity need time to approach the teachings, as some of the knowledge revealed can be quite confronting. Some extra classes, and it just put a few things even clearer for us, so I encourage you all to go online and see what the Unity National School has to offer. There's quite a lot of wisdom there when ready for it. For example, the five unity principles are a great start to the universal spiritual laws and the 12 powers. It's just a tool, the 12 powers, but they're structured in a way that we can think about them as the months come around and we get a deeper understanding of them as the months come around. So truth never changes, but our awareness of truth does. Unity's fifth principle states, knowing and understanding the laws of life, also called truth, are not enough. We must live the life that we know. And that's the hard part. We know that we are also responsible. Well, I give thanks for the knowledge I've consciously received about creation. We learn through the Unity teachings how to use denials and affirmation. And the big one with those is to use it with feeling. Because that's what gets us through the feeling behind the words. That's beyond language. That is feeling. My nephew in Cape Town, I might have said this, uh, ever I met him, it was wonderful to, to see. We went to Geppetto's and had lunch. I gave him a present. And he said, so what's this stuff you're into? Uncle Bill, and I started to tell him a little bit about it. So I noticed he had the typical Livingston trait when he said, oh, it's just positive thinking. Well, I said, yes and no. Many who come into unity and new thought find that after a while, their affirmations don't always work as well as they used to. Louise Hay, who we all used to have a copy of that little book of hers, she used to say when people first started using her affirmations, that they would find things like, oh, car parks are easier. You might win some money on a raffle, and things like that. But sometimes it slows down. And so what's holding us from something? It's unconscious stuff that is still in our brain and we can't put new ideas on top of old beliefs that are still lurking aren't they shocking some of the things we've learned you know at school you know we learned about the british empire we studied about the countries in britain we had empire day and all those sort of things well that su suited us then and it kept us all in control but now we have to think for ourselves and we have to get rid of some of those ideas that have held us individually and collectively down. Now, look, it takes consistency to do this. It's not easy. 
these ideas pop up at weird times, weird places. So we have to listen for that small voice, make room like we did in meditation, but do it regularly. And as we do, we clear the way for that inner self to say, here I am, listen. And we know it may not just be a, a still small voice, it might be a feeling. It might be a direction to go and intuition. But I'm learning more and more to follow it. And I had a test of that this week because we had the Melbourne Cup. And that week before I heard a song. And the song was Smooth Operator by Sarah Vaughan. Some of you may know that. I know Beverly would. And I looked up the, the, the paper the next day and sure enough, there was a horse called You're a Smooth Operator. And it was number 13. And I thought, okay, I'll put some money on that. Not much, about $10. And um, anyway, the pub was shut, so I couldn't do anything about it. And I think I spoke to Leslie and I said to her, look, I had a hunch to do this, but I didn't do it. And Leslie, in her wisdom, said, well, maybe the pub being shut was good because it was telling you not to put money on it. So thank you, Leslie. Spirit works in mysterious ways. But it's also great to hear ancient wisdom presented in a non-religious form. My library angel led me to this yesterday. It's from the writings of a French philosopher called Albert Camus, C-A-M-U-S. He was born in 1913 and he passed away in 1960 at the early age for a philosopher of 46. Quote, I found there was within me an invisible love. In the midst of tears, I found there was within me an invisible smile. In the midst of chaos, I found there was within me an invisible calm. I realized through it all that in the midst of winter, there was within me an invisible summer. And that made me happy, for it says that no matter how hard the world pushes against me, within me there is something stronger, something better pushing right back. So I've got that here, I keep it beside me till I memorise it. So to have this wisdom revealed, we need to take time and give our spiritual nature a space to be heard and felt. We can help do this by clearing the way, which is the only way we can understand it. There's a saying here I'm going to repeat a little bit later, but I'm going to close with this saying, as we remove the weeds from our garden, in order to give a new plants room to grow, so we remove the weed and thoughts from our minds and to prepare our developing expanded awareness of who we really are. Thank you. So I hope 